ESPN's Trevor Maddich is back on the line on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline. Maddich, Monday's rolling on because college football is back. Trevor, welcome back to the show. It's great to be back with you guys. What kind of emotions do you have when you think about college football beginning in its full capacity this week? It is a thrill. It's something you wait for all off season. The the anticipation builds. And what's made it even worse for college football fans this year is the magnitude of the opening weekend game. So now that we're finally here on the eve of it, it's just I can't wait. I can't wait for that anticipation to turn into an experience. Okay, week one, before we break down BYU-Arizona, week one is unbelievable. The best college football opening weekend ever. Uh, ESPN's pubbing it, and I think they're right. You look at all of the amazing games um, what's the game that sticks out the most of all those games to you? Well, college game day on ESPN Radio will be will be in Dallas for USC Alabama. Mm-hmm. That that's a gargantuan game. I mean, just huge for a variety of reasons. But you're talking about two of the of the most storied blue blood college football brands rolling out there. And for folks that think that USC doesn't have a chance, USC will be probably the most talented and athletic team that Alabama will face outside of LSU this entire season. So, I mean, that, that game has a lot of implications. ESPN college football analyst, BYU national champion in 1984, Trevor Maddich with us on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, now to BYU Arizona, who will meet up at the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona on Saturday night. What do you expect in a game from BYU who is loaded with talent but a new coaching staff against Arizona who has a bunch of changes of their own. Well, there's a lot of unknowns because you're right. Arizona has not named a starting quarterback yet. They've got a new defensive coordinator. They'll be running a new defensive scheme just as BYU is running a new defensive scheme. And so there's a lot of unknowns on both sides. But what I expect from BYU is to come out and play fast. I mean fast. I think they'll simplify the defensive scheme a bit so the guys don't have to overthink it so they can attack. And I think that on offense, there's so much complexity that you can build into this pro-style offense. But Ty Detmer understands that that complexity is no good if guys can't execute it at a fast pace. And so I expect BYU to not do a whole lot of crazy things, uh, certainly not a lot of things deep into into the playbook. But what they do do, they'll do with an attacking style on both sides of the ball and with great aggression. BYU has struggled out of the gate the last three times. They've had an offense, a brand new offensive coordinator, or in the case of Robert and I, he returned a second time. Yet, not all of those times did they have playmakers like a Taysom Hill and Jamal Williams. So, offensively, how fast? You mentioned the the speed. How fast in terms of points on the board do you expect uh, BYU to be in the season opener? You know, I think they'll move the ball well, and part of the reason is you got a combination of Taysom Hill. Uh, and his ability to run against that new defensive scheme for Arizona. And any mistake that they make, he can attack just by seeing it and going. Remember what he did to Texas a couple years ago. That was just because, in part, Taysom was awesome, and in part because Texas left the door open and Taysom found it and and sprinted through it. So I I think they're they're in good shape offensively just because any mistakes that occur, Taysom can erase with his physicality. Plus, you've got Jamal Williams back, and that, that helps at running back. They'll be going downhill. But I'm really excited about this group of receivers and seeing what they can do. I mean, you've got tall guys, and then you've got fast guys. Jonah Trineman, I think, is the guy to really watch. He's the transfer from Snow College. And when, you, when you've got fast guys like that that can stretch the defense, it opens it up for a running quarterback and a good running back like Williams. And when you've got tall guys, when the quarterback's on the move, They'll go into to scramble mode. They'll start running around, and all Taysom has to do is throw the ball up. And, and those guys will jump up and catch it. So I, I think there are a lot of uh, opportunities for BYU to, to pull toys out of the toy box and get them into this first game at a, at a pretty effective level. Taysom Hill with the three season-ending injuries in the last four years is back. He says he's healthy 100%. Ty Detmer has confirmed that from Taysom as well. And... Obviously, BYU fans want him <laughs> to stay to stay 100%. He says he's extended every effort, exhausted every effort 
to try and do what he can to maintain health. What do you expect from Taysom Hill this season? All out, pedal to the metal. That's it. If, if he tries to stay healthy, he's more likely to get hurt. He only knows one way to play, and he should go out and play it. And if his body can keep up with his heart, excellent. If his body can't keep up with his heart, well, that's nobody's fault. And, and you can't blame Taysom. It would be bad for BYU and bad for him. But I think the worst thing he could do is say well, that he's going to stay in the pocket more to not get hurt. Well, then, then he's not doing what comes naturally to him. And so I think that you know, we'll find out this year if his other injuries were just a succession of flukes or if really his body cannot keep up with all of his, his heart and his dedication and his willingness to go put it on the line. In the late 70s, early 80s, you played with some of the greatest quarterbacks in BYU history. Now BYU has a situation where they have the most athletic quarterback they've ever had, and then Tanner Mangum, who is a tremendous quarterback. What do you think of this situation for BYU going into the season at quarterback? It, it's one of the best quarterback situations in the country. I mean, you look at Notre Dame with Deshaun Kaiser and Malik Zaire. That's one of the best combination quarterback uh, situations in the nation, and I think BYU is right there with them, if not better, when you add Bo Hodge. Don't forget Bo Hodge, who's the third-string guy who'd be starting at a lot of places in the country. It's just that he's behind a couple of all-timers at BYU right now. Um, and so I think that gives them the ability to, to have different things that they can do. Hodge has a lot of Taysom Hill's uh, dual-threat capability. And, of course, Tanner Mangum, as a true freshman, fresh off the plane from Chile from his mission, was able to, to get that ball deep down the field in ways that will only improve as he gets into his second season this year and under Ty Detmer's tutelage. So, really, BYU has got not just guys that can play, but the ability for those guys to attack every area of the field with any kind of athletic or arm talent uh, capability that you would want. And you talk about toys in the toy box, Ty Detmer has got to be thrilled with what he's got to work with. Before we ask you for a prediction on the entire season, let's just tackle the first three games when BYU takes on three teams in the Pac-12 South, Arizona, Utah, and UCLA. What kind of opportunity does BYU have to make a national splash and a statement against those three teams in the Pac-12 South? Well, if they could go 2-1 and one against those teams, it would definitely make a national splash because you're, you're talking about a UCLA team that a lot of people are picking to win the Pac-12 a Utah team that probably has the best defense that, that they've had under Kyle Whittingham, and an Arizona team that, that's beat Utah the last four years in a row. And so if BYU can go 2-1, and one, that not only gets them into uh, the fringe of the conversation of, of a possible New Year's Six berth, it also uh, puts them in a position, a better position, to be able to finish this season in a great situation. Part of the problem with a schedule like this is that BYU can be better on the field and have a worse record than last year. If they, if they can start this 2-1, and one, it would be a phenomenal start that not just would, would give them confidence but would get them into a larger conversation. It's got to be the toughest uh, schedule in school history when you look at it top to bottom. Uh, and, and it's a first-year coaching staff, yet you have some real talent that comes back in – the aforementioned Taysom Hill, Jamal Williams, and others. So what do you think, what do you think a win total expectation uh, is for you in the regular season of 12 games? You know, I, I think seven wins would be a phenomenal season against this schedule. I think eight wins would be beyond phenomenal, and nine wins would be a dream. Uh, and, and once again, it's, it's not a matter of, of saying that BYU uh, is or is not really good. It's that this schedule is an all-timer of a tough schedule. I mean, you talk about the first four weeks. It's probably the most difficult first four weeks of anybody in the nation. All Power 5 schools, all very good schools, with West Virginia to round out uh, that fourth game uh, in Washington, D.C., which is essentially a home game for West Virginia. So uh, for BYU, it's a matter of not wearing down. They'll have to really manage their depth. Remember last year when they, they came out and beat Nebraska and the Boise State to open the season. Then they lost a one-point nail-biter at UCLA in week three, and they just wore out. And then they got to Michigan in week four and got blasted. You know, after that, they came on strong. But I think it's, uh, it's going to be something BYU will have to manage to make sure that their legs stay as fresh as they can be to go into each week 
with the best chance to, to perform at a high level. Follow him on the Twitter machine at T. Maddich, ESPN college football analyst extraordinaire. Trevor Maddich, a national champion for the Cougars in 1984, is back for another Maddich Monday. What do you think will define this BYU football team in the year 2016? I think what will define this team will be aggression, effort, and the ability to not fold when things get tough. Because, you know, all you can ask them to do is, is the best they can do. And BYU has a, a history, a reputation of being a very physical team, a team that never backs down. But you talk about a tough schedule now, to have to maintain that week after week after week, that'll show a lot of, of their character. Because you talk about, we talked about September, you get into October, and they play at Michigan State, home to Mississippi State, at Boise, and then in November at Cincinnati. Now, that's a stretch that's just – that would be difficult for any individual stretch. But coming after September, that's tough. And so I think what will define BYU is how they, they handle themselves in the midst of this kind of a relentless schedule without a bye week until they get into November, I believe, and so – or at least later in the season. And, and when you look at character, it's not always going to show up. In the, on the scoreboard. You want to watch the, the effort. You want to watch the, the body language on the sideline. You want to watch their belief because belief isn't something that doesn't happen. It's not something that, that fails just because you face a better football team on a given Saturday. And BYU is going to have to face a lot of teams with more talent and depth that they have over this season. Some BYU fans have given you a hard time because of your comments about uh, Houston, I think, on SportsCenter or College Football Live. Uh, you still think B – do you think BYU will get an invite to the Big 12, and do you still feel the same way about Houston? You know, I don't know if BYU will get an invite. I, I, think, BYU, I think Houston and BYU should be the top two uh, choices for the Big 12 should they try to expand. The reason I think Houston is number one is more addition by subtraction. Uh, they can't allow – a future expansion of the SEC to include Houston, which would give the SEC Houston and Texas A&M and would make South Texas a kingdom of the SEC. You see, right now, when you look at, at which areas of the country are owned by which conferences, you've got the ACC owns the Atlantic Coast, the SEC obviously the Southeast, the Heartland is owned by the Big Ten, uh, the West Coast, the Pacific North and, and California, et cetera, is owned by the Pac-12, and the Big 12 owns the crown jewel of Texas. Well, if the SEC is able to take away at least half of Texas, what does the Big 12 own? Um, Oklahoma and Kansas, right? Well, that's, that's not enough. So I think they need to make sure that Houston doesn't end up in a future expansion in a rival conference. At least they need to keep them within their own, their own realm. The second thing is I think BYU is, is the best for number two. And the reason is BYU's national brand. Right now people think of expansion in terms of the size of the local media market and how many eyeballs the local media market can provide to a cable network. Well, the Big 12 right now doesn't have a cable network, and they are um, or a conference, net, conference network, and there's no plans to do it. And so that's, that's one reason why the, the local market is less important. But the other reason is that going forward, we don't know how college football fans will consume college football games. In other words, who will they buy the games from? Will it be a, a bundled cable package like it is now? Will it be a, a premium sports package that they'll pay extra for? Will they buy games directly from conferences or teams? and have them streamed over the Internet through services like Amazon Prime or Netflix. I mean, we don't know where that's going to be. And so BYU, with its national and even international pull, can pull in eyeballs from all over the country. And so I think that local market will be less important than, than larger national brand name. And going forward into this brave new world of new media, I think BYU is a strong candidate to strengthen any Power Five conference. Trevor, fantastic stuff. Uh, we wish you safe travels as you make your way down to Dallas and Jerry's World for Alabama-USC. Of course, he'll be part of ESPN 
game day radio. I just hope a BYU fan shows up and is holding up a BYU to Big 12 sign somewhere behind you. <laughs> well, if they are, I'll go back there and, uh, and, and shake their hand and take a selfie with them. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the time, Trevor. Bye, guys.